world. This is Derek from cashflow.ca. I'm going to do a JavaScript tutorial today and we're going to focus on the reduce method as well as just kind of look at some of the fundamentals of string manipulation. So let's say I have a string called foobar and I'm, I want to reverse this thing. Well, I know that JavaScript has a reverse method. Can I just don't, oh, no, right? Reverse doesn't work. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a point to this video. So what's, what's one way of reversing a string? So there's a really popular Stack Overflow question on this that demonstrates, OK, let's create our own function. And let's call it reverse, where we take an input string. We split that string, every character. That will output an array, which we're going to reverse the components of the array, and then we're going to join that array back so, back together. So in JavaScript, JavaScript, this requires creating your own function and using three native methods. So that if I do foobar, or if I pass that string into my function, there we go. Now, deconstructing that, split will give us each letter as an array. Then we'll reverse that array, starting at the R and ending at the F, as opposed to the opposite up here. And of course, finally, we add the join method back onto the end. and we get a string. So that's kind of quirky, right? Like, why is it that if I'm in Ruby land and I have a string, I could just do it like that. Isn't that wonderful? Might even work on bare strings. But you get the point. You Fred now. So is there another way? And yes, of course there is. That's why we're doing this video. So the alternative is to take a string. Again, let's say we have a word. Call it reverse me. Now we're going to write another function and we're going to call it reverse me. Which takes a value and a state and simply returns the sum. So that's our new function. It has two arguments, value and state. And it adds those values back together. Now, I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but I'm going to reverse the order of the arguments. And you'll figure out why in two seconds. So now, finally, we're going to get to reduce. Reduce has a pretty, I would say, interesting property in that it takes two arguments, uh, it will take a function, and a starting point. So this is actually going to represent our state as the second argument and the value is passed in like so. Hmm. Of course, if we pass it in array, there we go, I see. So word 
is a string. Reduce needs an array. So by doing word.split, we get each of our letters inside of an array. And we can then say word.split and run our operation on reduce. So this is a little quirky. You might find that to be somewhat weird. Um, but just to give you another interesting use case for split, you could similarly do some math with it where the sum is held by the state and the value is passed in as it iterates over the array. You get a better idea of the possibilities of programming with JavaScript, hopefully through uh, these two examples. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments, and I'll be happy to address it. You can find me on GitHub uh, at dbraid, or uh, follow me on Twitter uh, at royalars. Toodaloo!